Diablo 2 Resurrected. I've rediscovered this game in recent months for some inexplicable reason and thought I would share my gameplay experiences for any potential newcomers venturing into what a real modern Diablo experience might feel like. Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Luke the Gamer Duke. I enjoy playing, dissecting, and talking about video games. Today in Diablo 2 Resurrected, I'd like to talk about the tombs of Talrasha. Specifically in normal mode, are they worth going through? What does that mean and why consider it to begin with? Well, let's go find out. The Tombs of Talrasha. These seven tombs found in the Canyon of the Magi are only accessed by finding Horizon's journal in the Arcane Sanctuary, which is only accessed via a portal at the bottom of the city's palace cellar. So it's out there. The tomb is the location of the final quest in Act 2 where you must find the imprisoned ancient Haradrim mage Talrasha himself before the Dark Wanderer can, whom at this point we have confirmed is Diablo reincarnate. Only one of these tombs contains Talrasha, the others are false tombs. The real one can easily be identified by comparing engraved symbols on small pillars outside of each tomb to the one in your quest log. So why go through the false ones? Well, if you're feeling a bit underwhelmed with your gear, or maybe you're still below the next skill unlock, which is at level 24, what you find in the real tomb might cause you some... difficulty. Duriel. For the unfamiliar, Duriel is known as the first real challenge you come across with your character. And Dariel's poison from the prior act can be deadly, but she's nothing compared to approaching Duriel unprepared. He is extra strong, extra fast, does knockback, stun, and cold damage. He'll easily overwhelm you before you even know what has happened. So in this battle, you might want every advantage you can muster. The right skills and items can turn the tide in most every engagement. So let's talk skills first. When I found the canyon, I had just reached level 22 two full levels short of that next unlock. For the Paladin, I get Holy Shield, which increases defense and block percentage. The Amazon getting murked on earlier could have benefited from something like Decoy. Barbarian unlocks Frenzy and Battle Orders, which increases life and mana. The Assassin gets a new trap, while the Sorceress gets a great selection with Meteor, Thunderstorm, and Blizzard. So getting to that level 24 skill can make a huge difference in your fight. And the question. Can you acquire enough experience to reach level 24 by going through the false tombs? For full disclosure, I had already cleared the real tomb prior to recording, but it provided just under half a level. Also, since there is no enemy level scaling, your experience gains are going to be a bit subjective depending on your level when entering the canyon. Some of the tombs will be small in size, and others will be fairly large. The real tomb is generally the largest. In all cases, you'll encounter swarms of enemies. Many rooms can have unique mobs clustered within, so look before leaping into the fray. But keep your wits about you, target the unravelers, watch for unique mobs, and you'll get through the tombs without much incident. After clearing the final tomb, I gained one full level and about 90% of another, so just short of exactly what I needed, which was two full levels. So now I could easily run somewhere else in the map to extract those extra EXP points, like clearing the canyon, maybe do an Andariel run, or simply exit and reload the map. Run straight back to the real tomb, slaying enemies along the way, and you will get the extra experience for that much needed skill unlock. Now the items. What the hell is in here? And what are we even looking for? Well, we're looking for the good stuff, right? A definitive upgrade. Rare, unique, and set items. Charms, rings, and amulets cube recipe collectibles like gems and runes. One quick side note, I did find several class-specific magical items like helms, wands, staves, and scepters, whose effects can be major upgrades for your skills, but are highly build-specific. Plus, they're not the higher range of rarity we're looking for. And a large basis on what drops has to do with magic find. A simple explanation can be found in the wiki, but essentially this increases the percent chance of each item found to be of a higher rarity. Uh, pretty straightforward, right? As you saw, my magic find is 43%. It all depends on what you already have found or have stashed away, but either way, I would say 43 is fairly modest for this area. Like I mentioned, I have already run through the real tomb, so you'll just have to take my word that I didn't find much. Some magical items, a ring and amulet, a couple gems, but that was about it. When inspecting the loot from all seven tombs, this was a dud. I was pretty disappointed with all of this. Two rares and a handful of trinkets is not a great run. 
I had to find something better. So now I was curious. What would I discover if I boost my magic find with items from my stash or from other characters? Because better magic find always begets better items, right? Right. So what would be the difference? Would it be worth the time and effort to transfer a few items from one character to another for the sake of boss dungeons? Well, I decided to do that. For my second run, the magic find is heightened to 130. 130 is fairly solid, especially for this part of the game. It's a far cry from what you can be doing with full set gear later on in the game, but here it should yield some pretty good stuff. When going back through the tombs, the drops were indeed as boosted as the magic find. I found more rares, a set item, rune after rune, and plenty of rings, amulets, and charms to provide potential affix upgrades. This was certainly an improvement. In a quick side-by-side, -side, you can see the comparison of potential loot is staggering. Though, technically, this is to be expected. Also, for what it's worth, this run produced just under one full level's worth of experience. So if you're desperate for one more skill point, you can squeeze out another level by going through this area a second time. And so that's it, huh? Higher magic find definitively drops superior amounts of quality loot, right? Well, not so fast. This is where it gets interesting. There's an old saying, measure twice, cut once. So for the sake of a second measurement, and also because I'm an insane person, I decided to go back through the tombs again, but this time with my original 43%. And what I found this time floored me. Hopping back to the canyon again, I began charging my way to the first tomb, but something bothered me about skipping past this corpse, so I decided to check it. And what did I find? Huh? A unique two-handed out of the gate? I have got to check this thing out. Whoa. One problem. I literally have the same sword equipped. Not stashed, not on another character, literally in my other weapon slot. The odds of finding the same type of item, the same grade of that item, the exact same rarity of that grade of item that I already have equipped is so insanely slim. Like it couldn't have been anything else. Strangely enough, I feel like this happens more often than it should. Anyway, getting back into the tombs, my fortune continued. I found two rares and two runes in just the first two tombs. I even rechecked my magic find to make sure I did indeed change it. Yep, 43. Continuing onward, I literally found nothing in the third or fifth tomb, but the others did produce solid drops. Considering the magic find, this was a surprisingly stacked haul. Shadow Fang is a cool sword. Cold damage plus life and mana steal are shining beacons for any melee character. Hell, even I'm using it. So with three runs worth of items, let's compare all this. In referencing runs one and two again, comparing the other runs don't make any sense. We see in lining up one and three with the same magic find, the amount of loot is vastly different and is just as baffling when lining up runs two and three with vastly different magic find. How can 43% produce just as many, if not arguably better items than 130? But maybe that's just a product of the magic find mechanics, simply being a percentage. After all, anyone who's played any XCOM knows that consistent percentages can produce wildly different results. I'd really like to explore this in future Diablo 2 videos, but that's for later and this is now. There's still one more task at hand. Daryl. The entire reason we did everything we did up until now. Was this all worth it? Well, in regards to experience, Holy Shield should help me tremendously since Daryl is all melee. And as for the loot, there are some mixed results here. The first run was underwhelming, but the second and third provided some great drops. I kept some of the charms, my mercenary will take the poleaxe and scale mail, and there's cold resist all around. Now, let's get this! Entering Talrosh's chamber, the fight begins immediately. Duriel will target your mercenary, but can't stand for very long and will die pretty quickly. Now it's all you. Duriel hits hard and fast. But with Holy Shield now available, he had such a difficult time landing his hits, I was able to slash away with relative confidence. Granted, I might be slightly overleveled here, I remain positive if I had faced Duriel without Holy Shield, I would have had a much, much rougher time. As for his loot, personally, I usually feel underwhelmed by his drops here, so I reboosted my magic find back up to 130, which was the right call. 
The gloves could certainly be an upgrade for another character, but the heavy belt is an upgrade for this one for sure. I'm also a set collector, so this is now part of a whole set that I did not have before. One final note of interest when looting these tombs, in all three runs, the chests didn't drop shit. All the quality loot that dropped was either from enemy kills or corpse and urn checks. I'll spare you all 21, but please enjoy continuing this small montage of continuously disappointing chest openings, even with 130 magic fine. So what have we learned from all this? Are the false tombs of Talrasha worth going through? Overall, I would say a definitive yes. Getting to level 24 was a huge benefit to the fight, and considering the other characters' level 24 skills, the extra experience is worth it. For loot drops, well, it seems to depend. Apparently your magic find is mostly relative, I think? Either way, as you saw, there are some pretty great things to be found regardless of what your magic find is. The false tombs are 100% worth going through. Lastly, I can definitively say, anytime you're going through the tombs, or any area in Diablo 2 for that matter, check every corpse and kick everything you can. Some of the best stuff in the game can be found without a fight. Thank you so much for watching this video. That will conclude this small analysis of the tombs of Talrasha in Diablo 2. And now this is where you let me know what you think in the comments. Do you go now through you the tombs of Talrasha, or do you skip them completely? Have I changed your mind at all? And what's the wackiest thing you found in these tombs? Also, if you liked what you heard or saw, please consider liking the video. It'll really help me extend my branches. And if you enjoyed this gameplay or my takes in general, please consider subscribing. It'll make it much easier to find my next video. I have more Diablo content coming, I've been getting in the Path of Exile, and I have many other games in many different genres I'd like to explore, dissect, and talk about. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Adios!